something, uh, some presentation that I'm really interested in seeing from um, Alexander here, down here, Alexander Sander. He's the e European Union policy manager from um, Free Software Foundation Europe. And he, he will have, I, I would guess, a very interesting talk about public money, <laughs> public code. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm using this one? This, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so actually uh, my talk is more on the government side and uh, not so much on the business side. It's about a campaign we started um, two years ago. It's called Public Money, Public Code. And we are trying to modernize the public infrastructure with free software. First of all, what is Office of E? Uh, the Free Software Foundation Europe is a charity um, that empowers people to control their technology. And we strongly do believe that this is done with free software. Uh, I'm the policy manager of FSFE, so I'm taking more or less care that um, European policy is good uh, in terms of free software. Well, let's start with a, with a short comic um, in order to, to give you an impression um, why free software is good for governments. I mean, I think all of you know um, the chain of command for the um, US uh, nuclear bombs, um, but the question is who installed this red button? So. Um, and that's the main question. If you can't look into the code, you are um, not able to see what the code is um, going to do. And um, so that's why it's a very good idea to have as a government, um, as well as companies, but especially for governments, it's a good idea to have a code where you can look inside and see what the code does, um, because else it might uh, end in a very strange situation. So um, what is free software, free and open source software? Um, open source software. So you have four freedoms. You can use the software, you can share the software, study and improve it. So it means you can use the software for any purpose and um, there's no restriction with the license or anything else, no limitations, so you can use it forever and you can use it for, for whatever you want. Also, you are allowed to share the software. Um, this means also you can sell it, so it doesn't mean that free software is for free, but uh, it can be, but uh, it don't have to be. So, um, I mean, uh, we've seen already some companies here, but imagine, for example, the Red Hat deal, uh, billions of dollars, so you can make a lot of money with free software. Also, you can study the software, um, you can look into the code, you can see um, what the software really does and you can improve it. I mean, you are also allowed to make it worse, but normally, um, if you are working on the software, you should make it better, so that's why you can improve it. So if these four freedoms are uh, guaranteed, then it's free software, open source software, free and open source software. So this is what we are talking about, and this is what we want to bring to governments in order to have a transparent system, not just for the governments, but also for us, the citizens. Um, so, why should we support free software in governments? So, first of all, we need trustworthy systems and public bodies must ensure that they have the full control over the software and their computer systems. I mean, this is, uh, I showed you the, 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 the bump button. It's, it's very crucial that, that we have um, control over our uh, software as a government, uh, as this is the core of our uh, digital infrastructure for governments. Um, and also, public bodies are financed through taxes, with our money. And um, so, therefore, they should spend the money in the most efficient way, which is possible. And um, therefore, we should use free software. Um, free software projects for governments help to um, foster your regional IT infra, uh, your regional SME partners. It gives you um, strong independence, so you are not um, you are not in a vendor lock-in, and it's very efficient because you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Governments are more or less having all the same needs, and therefore collaboration is a very good idea. And um, the money you waste on licenses, you can spend them on free software projects, and a way better solution. Um, so let's, let's have a look uh, what problems arise when we use proprietary software. So something like, um, I don't know, um, 
a Windows product and something like this. So <clears throat> first of all, we don't have any interoperability. So if we are using the software from one vendor, it doesn't communicate with another vendor. So we have this vendor login. We have, don't have any interoperability. And also, um, if we look to the future, we have unpredictable costs and, um, and maintenance. So if we want to have any changes in the software, we, are, um, we have to go to the vendor. If the vendor says we change our license for the next two years or we are offering you now an office solution where you can buy it, uh, for one year subscription or something else, you have, um, yeah. so then the vendor just do this for you. Um, there's also a low acceptance by citizens. I mean, just imagine you are going to school and you have to do a PowerPoint presentation. Um, then you have to buy the software, da, da, da. So it's also a kind of a problem for citizens to, to communicate with the governments uh, when you have to use proprietary software. Um, also, your investments are lost because the money you're paying for the license is just gone and you can't do it, uh, you can't invest it anywhere else. And there are also some security issues. Um, I mean, imagine a code where you can't just log in. Uh, there might be backdoors you um, don't see. There might be any problems in the, in the software you don't see. So, I mean, it doesn't mean in general that free software is secure by default, but still um, you can look into the code and see if there's a security issue. Um, you can't do it that easily with proprietary software. So the solution, uh, the solution is then free software, so we have interoperability, uh, interoperability due to open standards. Um, we have free licenses, so we are very independent, so we can switch from one vendor to another one. We can make um, at least minor changes uh, if we want. We can make big changes, and uh, we, can, yeah, we can improve the software on, um, uh, and scale it to, to wherever we want. Um, we can collaborate. Uh, as I already said, governments are more or less having the same needs. Imagine two cities. Um, they normally do the same. So city A is doing the same as city B. So if they are buying a software together, they can share um, the costs and also the risks in terms of it, if it doesn't work. Um, the system is transparent by default, which is also very good for citizens. I mean, you can see what your government does, for example, with your data. And <clears throat> it's very easy to involve local partners. Um, again, if you want to make some minor changes in your software, you just look for a local IT company doing free software, and then they help you to improve the code and make the changes. Um, if you just go to a big vendor with proprietary software, you always have to go back to this one vendor in order to get your changes. And they might even say, we don't want to do it because it's just a minor change. We don't earn money with this. So we are not interested. Um, if you are doing this with free software, there might be a, um, a startup or SME who is willing to do your minor changes. There is no problem. You will definitely find a partner who will do this for this. And you have this um, code where you can look inside and, and see if there are, um, for example, any backdoors. And it's not just you who can look inside the code. It's all of us, so we as citizens can um, um, have a look at the code as well. So there are many good reasons to use free software for governments, also for, for, um, uh, for business, but um, yeah. So and if we, if we have a look at um, the, the governments as a, as a purchaser of software, then it's very interesting that up to 27% of the revenue of software firms is done by governments. So that's really a lot, and as is, I mean, a very strong buyer and therefore they, they should have yeah, somehow a lot of power in order to have the best software solution they want. And yeah. Um, and let's have a look to one example. Um, it's, it's France. Um, they, they started uh, back in 2012 to, to change their free software um, policies a bit. Um, um, this led to the situation that up to more than 5%, uh, um, we see that the companies um, increasing that using free software. We're having like up to 18% the increase of number of IT-related startups and 14% IT jobs. And what I find very interesting, 16% um, less software patterns. So you can see if you are changing um, your, your, your policy, if you are 
um, deciding as a government to go in the direction of free and open source software. There, is, um, there are spillover effects to your um, local IT um, um, yeah, related jobs and, and business, and it helps you to foster your regional SMEs and business. Um, also, when we go on a city level, um, there are loads of cities um, switching to free software in the last years. I think one of the um, best examples for this is Barcelona. Um, they are collaborating a lot with other cities, so they are not doing this alone. They are collaborating, for example, with Paris, Amsterdam, Helsinki, and others. And they decided to spend 70% of their bu software budget uh, for um, open source software. So they, they have a rule and they say, so 70% of our money have to go into free software projects, and they do a migration step by step. Um, so they don't go there like uh, in Munich and do a migration from one day to another and completely switch the system, but every time they are starting um, something new, every time they are looking for a new software, then they are looking for an open source solution and spend their money on this. And this also led to the situation that there are, um, since, the, since they, they, they started to do this, 3,000 com companies have been involved and 60% of these are SMEs who contributed to the code and um, took 70% of this money. So you can see it helps your um, local IT infrastructure, your SMEs and your companies and business. And so having um, this in mind, um, we, we just thought about starting a campaign to convince governments to use free software. And um, yeah, it's very easy. We, we started to campaign, call it public money, public code. And yeah, so first of all, we are asking um, to use taxpayers' money in a, in a good way and to release them um, the code as free software. And so code paid by the people, by the people should be available to the people, and we have something like an open letter, so this is the, the, the main point of this is that we want legislation requiring that publicly financed software developed for the public sector be made a publicly available under a free and open source software license. If it's public money, it should be public code. So it's very easy. We are using these arguments, and um, since we started this campaign, um, um, it helped us a lot. Um, loads of organization um, supporting our um, demand. We have like more than 200 organizations now who are scientists. There are international NGOs, national NGOs, regional NGOs, and also um, administrations, for example, uh, the city of Barcelona who signed this campaign. And we have also individual uh, signatures. There are more than 20,000, so if you haven't signed so far, um, we would be happy if you just do so and help us in order to promote this campaign. Um, we also made uh, recently a brochure which is uh, dedicated for um, administrations. So it's um, like all the arguments I was showing you in a, in a very concrete way and um, written for um, administrations. Um, in order to, to help them, um, to give them arguments uh, why to, to switch to free software and to show them a way how to do this. Um, sometimes people do uh, in administrations are afraid of procurement procedures or they are afraid that, um, of, of usability and stuff like this. And so we put all our arguments together in one brochure, um, gathered uh, some best practices and show them uh, the administrations a way on how to go and how to migrate their systems to a free software project. And I think one key point for us is to do it step by step. So don't switch your whole system from one day to another, but every time you're doing something new, then switch to a free software project, and then step by step, uh, you will have a free software solution in the end, and your government is run by free software in the end. So. Um, also, if you know any cities, governments, administrations, whatever, who are interested in this, please let us know. We are happy to get in contact with these guys. Um, I mean, we can see that, for example, Paris, Amsterdam, Helsinki, and all the others, they, these are good examples. Um, they, they are quite happy with their free software solutions, and I think it's, for us as a taxpayer, also a very good solution um, to push the governments to switch to free software. We have, for example, the Talent Declaration, which is signed by all the member states of the EU, so Portugal signed as well. 
um, they are asking, um, so the member states um, um, said and signed that they want to go into the direction of open source in the future. But um, still, I think there's um, yeah, a lot uh, of, of, of improvement that could be done. And so we have to put a bit of pressure on the governments and convince them to use free software. And um, also what we did is, uh, in order to convince the people, is to make a video, um, which I'm going to show you now. This video is also available in Portuguese. Um, but uh, I will show you now the English version of it. And I would be also happy if you uh, are willing to share this within your networks and to help us with our campaign. So now we have to do some magic of the presentation here to see the video. Or not. <laughs> Shall I push any buttons, do anything? for a moment, okay. our government would treat our public infrastructure like our streets and public buildings, the same way it treats our digital infrastructure. Our members of parliament would work in a rented space where they weren't allowed to vote in favour of stricter environmental laws because the owner, a multinational corporation, didn't allow that kind of voting in its buildings. Nor will it allow a long overdue upgrade to more than 500 seats. This means some members of parliament have to stay outside in the street. And a couple of blocks away, a brand new gym is already being torn down just six months after it was built. It's being replaced with an exact replica at great expense. And the only difference, the new manufacturer also provides street ball as an added feature. Meanwhile, every night through a hidden back door in the city hall, Documents that contain sensitive information on citizens, from bank data to healthcare records, are being stolen. But no one is allowed to do anything about it, because searching for back doors and locking them would infringe the signed user agreement. And as absurd as this sounds, when it comes to our digital infrastructure, things like the software and programs that our governments are using every day, this comparison is pretty accurate because mostly our administrations procure proprietary software. This means a lot of money goes into licenses that last for a limited amount of time and restrict our rights. We aren't allowed to use our infrastructure in a reasonable way. And because the source code of proprietary software is usually a business secret, Finding security holes or deliberately installed backdoors is extremely difficult and even illegal. But our public administrations can do better if all publicly financed software were to be free and open source. We could use and share our infrastructure for anything and for as long as we wanted. We could upgrade it, repair it and remodel it in any way to fit our needs. And because the open source in free software means that the blueprint is openly readable for everyone, this makes it much easier to find and close security holes. And if something practical and reliable was created digitally, not only can you reuse the blueprint all over your country, but the actual thing itself can be deployed anywhere, even internationally. A great example of this is Fix My Street, Originally developed in Great Britain as a free software app to report, view and discuss local problems like potholes, it's now being used all over the world. Everyone benefits because new features and improvements are shared by everyone. If all our software were developed like this, we could stop struggling with restrictive licenses and could start thinking about where and how software could help us we could concentrate on creating a better society for everyone. So, if you think that tomorrow's infrastructure should be in our own hands, help us now by sharing this video and visiting our website, publiccode.eu. It's time to make our demand. Public money, public code. Well, yes, so I think the arguments are on the table. Um, 
I guess you are somehow convinced because you are here on the open source conference, but let's now convince our governments, our administrations to switch to free and open source software. Um, help us by supporting our campaign, and um, if you have any contacts um, to, to administrations which could be useful for this and who could be convinced by this campaign, please let us know. Please get in contact with us, and yeah, let's fight for free and open source software in governments and administrations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. Um, it's a, a great presentation and great video, uh, by the way. Um, and we'll be sharing it later on on the social networks and so on. Um, and in fact, it's, it's true almost everywhere, because here in Portugal we face the same thing. Uh, open source is everywhere, but it has gone much further on the private sector than on the public sector. So that makes us think. And it's the same all over. <laughs> 